December 7, 1941. September 11, 2001. And January 6, 2021. When he's in here, it's not our chair. Look, I love you guys, you're brothers, but we can't be disrespectful. Everybody, I'm Dave Rubin. This is the Rubin Report. It's March 9th, 2023. We are live streaming on Rumble, YouTube, and Locals. I am happy to report that all of our live stream numbers this week have basically blown everything out of the water. Things are good here. If you want to join us for the post-game show, uh, go over to rubinreport.locals.com. There's a live chat happening right now. You can talk to people that are in this room and other viewers of the show and get me messages and I may respond to them in the post-game show. And you can correct me if I get anything wrong. By the way, I did make a mistake on the show the other day and I'm not above correcting myself, unlike these clowns on mainstream media. I said that Sununu was the former governor but Sununu is the current governor. So there you go. Dave Rubin made a mistake. Dave Rubin doesn't mind correcting himself. These things happen. I will go to bed without dessert tonight. Uh, what we're going to be focusing on today is the machine versus Tucker Carlson, because the machine is crashing down on this guy right now. I mean, across every uh, facet of the machine, whether we're talking about the Democrats, the Republicans, the DC swamp, the media, social media, everybody's going after the guy. As you know, uh, Tucker Carlson got 40, was it 40,000 hours, right? 60,000 hours, 60,000 hours of security footage from January 6th. He's been releasing it, doing interviews about it, having his people dive into it, try to make some sense of it. And everybody's freaking out that we will have trans Transparency, right? They love other trans things, just not transparency. I cannot sit here and tell you that every single video that Tucker is showing on his show is perfectly uh, edited and unmanipulated or anything else. I, he's putting his butt on the line by doing it, so I suspect that he and his team are doing a, a, a hopefully a, a fairly proper job of it. Um, but everybody is crashing down on him. And when you know, when you got Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer in agreement that releasing information to the people is bad, then something does kind of uh, stink in stink town. Because that's where things stink, in stink town. Uh, so we're going to talk about that and then a, a bunch of other stuff. Uh, but I wanted to show you one little quick 10 second video of yesterday. So we did do our live interview at the local studio in Miami with Russell Brand yesterday. We're going to be putting that up next week. We thought maybe we would put it up this week, or I almost live streamed it yesterday, but you know, the guy is just on a major, major blitz right now between the, the real time thing that obviously blew up. And then he was on Rogan and Ben Shapiro and a couple other things. So we wanted to hold it till next week. And I did sort of a, I wanted to do like a postmortem of, of what happened on real time and how his feelings about being in the United States right now in the middle of the culture war, which as he said, he kind of accidentally got into, like he didn't mean for that whole thing to go viral. He doesn't really like to court controversy. At least that's what he says, but it was really nice to connect with him. Here's just a little behind the scenes is about 10 seconds after our interview. I'm with Russell Brand. He's exhausted. He's talking to somebody else. Say something to the people about little hairy for my taste. Get off. <laughs> He's a good dude. He's just fun and, and just decent and light. And, you know, we got into some of the political stuff. It's kind of interesting because he talks politics, but he's really not, he's far more into sort of metaphysics than politics. So he comes at, at it at an interesting angle. Anyway, we'll post that next week. And before we get to everything else, let me talk to you guys about Patriot Supply. Guys, uh, you know, with so much chaos and danger in the world these days, I highly recommend you stock up on emergency food right now, especially if you live in a blue state or blue city. Uh, let's face it, you're gonna need this food and now's the time to get it before it's too late. Go to mypatriotsupply.com and pick up their popular three month emergency food kit. When you do, you'll also get $200 worth of survival gear as a free bonus. You'll need this gear when things fall apart or the grid goes down or anytime you might have to fend for yourself. You get everything you need or to get everything to you need. Go to mypatriotsupply.com. Your $200 bonus gift comes free with each three month emergency food kit you order. That way, everybody in your family will be prepared. But hurry, this offer won't last forever. Check this off your list 
and sleep better knowing your family won't suffer if the worst case scenario ever happens, zombie apocalypse, et cetera, et cetera. MyPatriotSupply.com, that's MyPatriotSupply.com and you get free shipping, so come on. What are you doing? Get, get moving, all right. All right, so look, what's happening right now, let me just broadly, before we get into the specifics, just one more time address the, the high level stuff on the January 6th events, okay? Uh, it was not an insurrection by any definition of the word insurrection that any of us had before January 6th. These people did not have plans to take over the government. They did not bring weapons. They were not shredding the constitution or taking over a branch of government. There might have been one or two really bad actors. Somebody brought you know, some sort of ties and said they might wanna kidnap Mike Pence or something. But there was no grand insurrection as if the government was going to fall, as if the military was going to be taken over in a coup. Like, there was none of that, okay? What there were were a bunch of overzealous people and some, some I would say, just good, decent Americans who went to protest something that they felt was unjust, which was the results of the last election. Trump, obviously, for two months was contesting the election. Uh, he repeatedly said in the days and, and really moments up to January 6th, you've got to go, if you go, you've got to go peacefully. He never called for violence. We had this complete sham, complete sham January 6th hearing that nothing came of it, right? You can go back to my videos from a year ago when they started talking about whether they were going to do this thing or not. And I was just like, I'm not even going to cover it because not only was the thing really nothing, Right? It was a bunch of overzealous people in some broken windows. And yes, you can't break private property or public property. Uh, you, know, you can't trespass, things of that nature. But I was like, the thing itself was nothing. And, and this hearing is so obviously partisan that I don't want to waste time on it. And because we've been through a couple sham impeachments too, it was just obvious to me nothing was going to come of it. So of course, nothing does come of it. And then we kind of put it to bed. But then Tucker Carlson gets these 40, 60,000 hours of, uh, of surveillance tape from the Capitol. And everybody starts freaking out. Now, McCarthy, as I said the other day, Kevin McCarthy, uh, he could have given it to everybody, right? He could have given it across the board, given it to everybody. The, the lefty media would have ignored it probably. The right media would have run with it. We'd still be in this cr crazy situation right now, this sort of uh, deficit of truth that we're in right now because people see things. People on both sides see things they see the exact same thing and they come away thinking completely different things. That, that, we have to figure out that issue. That's an important issue. In any event, he gave it to Tucker. Tucker has now released a bunch of this and is doing interviews with some of the officers that are there and people that went and lawyers, et cetera, et cetera. And everyone's freaking out about it. Now, let me just say one other thing and then we're diving into the clips. I don't know, once again, if Tucker is doing this completely honestly. I don't, I just can't, I like Tucker. I truly like Tucker. I think he is a good guy. And I think he actually is an honest guy as far as I can tell, right? I don't know. But the point is, why is it that by videos being released, everyone is freaking out across the aisle, right? He's not, he's not uh, manipulating these videos because if he was manipulating these videos, people would be countering it, but they're not. They're just saying, don't see it. Don't look. Oh, there's a fire over there. Look the other way. So that, that's my backdrop to all of this. Now I wanna show you a bit about how the system is reacting to Tucker, right? Again, whether he's doing this perfectly or not, how the system is reacting to him. What does the system do when you, when you step out of what their Overton window is? They send the late night comedians to go after you. And uh, here is Stephen Colbert. Thanks in large part to the former president. There's a whole industry of people who make a good living trying to make you think you're insane. Well, I make a very good living reminding you that you're not. Now you'd think, you would think, you think that once the people gaslighting you on a daily basis have been revealed to be liars, say in multiple text messages in a $1.6 billion court filing by Dominion Voting Systems, they would pump the brakes. But apparently, some people are just addicted to being dicks. <laughs> Case in point, Fox News host and, and toddler sucking on a dog turd, Tucker Carlson. Here, here's what happened. In order to become a speaker, Kevin McCarthy had to make a lot of stupid promises to a lot of awful people like Matt Gates. 
Okay, now first off, if you laughed at any of that, please stop watching this show. If your mouth even moves slightly, if you literally were like, you gotta go, you can't watch this show anymore, we're banning audience members. There's nothing funny about that. He has 20 writers to write that drivel, okay, fine. Uh, First, if you want a little more context to what it is that Tucker has been releasing, uh, you could go back to our Tuesday show, we've got the link right down below so you can see some of the initial content that he has put out there, just so that you have context. It's interesting, Uh, Colbert can call him all these names, sucking a turd, and blah, 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 he's a dick, but he doesn't counter any of the information that Tucker puts out there, That's, that's just how it is. So what is it that Tucker is actually doing? Well, one of the things Tucker is doing is talking to a former Capitol Police officer, his name is Tarek Johnson. And Tarek, who happens to be black, I don't care, but it does add color to a world that is uh, in, a, in a racial renaissance or something, whatever we're in right now, at least according to the Wokesters. Uh, he talked to former Capitol Police Officer Tarek Johnson about what happened that day and what Officer Johnson tried to do as the events were unfolding. Take a look at this. Once protesters moved inside the building, Johnson's first concern was the safety of senators. His job was to protect them. In rising panic, he called over the radio for direction and assistance. Even now, two years later, he is baffled by the response he got. I was requesting permission to evacuate the Senate side, um, the Senate chambers, um, because I had a clear line of sight to get them out the Senate door. And I didn't get permission. Um, The dispatcher called a couple times to see if I can get permission. No response. With Yogananda Pittman and his other supervisors unresponsive, Johnson says he decided to begin the evacuation of senators himself. The person that I thought was going to authorize the evacuation didn't do it. I wanted to get those members of Congress out as quickly as I could. That's why I initiated, um, you know, those evacuations. Me being disciplined, um, it wasn't as important as not getting the members of Congress and their staff to safety. Footage we reviewed seems to bolster Johnson's. Okay, so this is interesting. You have a Capitol Police officer not getting a response when he's saying, hey, uh, mob of people, and they're supposed to be evil white supremacists and insurrectionists and blah, blah, blah. Mob of people on their way into the Capitol. Could we maybe get the senators and the congressmen out of here? He's getting no response. So he does it himself. If, if you were all in on the idea that this was a true insurrection, that these were violent people who were going to kill members of Congress, overthrow the government and usher in a wave of MAGA terror or something, then this is the hero in the story. Isn't this guy the hero in the story? Because he actually did get senators and congressmen out. He also happens to be a young black guy, which again, if you're playing the identity politics game, everyone, why, don't, why doesn't everyone know him his name? Why doesn't everyone know the name Tarek Johnson? Here is a young police officer who saved the senators on January 6th. This, everyone should know his name. Alas, we do not, and you're not gonna believe this. He got fired. The video shows Johnson conducting the evacuation of senators from the chamber. Yet Tark Johnson was not rewarded for what he did. He was punished. A photo emerged of Johnson wearing a MAGA hat outside the Capitol. That picture cost him his career. Sometimes I look at it and like, thank you God for blessing me with this hat. And sometimes I'm like, wow, I wish this hat never came in my life. A Biden voter, Johnson says he donned the hat in an effort to rescue fellow officers he believed were trapped in the building. I figured if I had the hat on, it would be easier for me to navigate my way through the crowd. It was um, basically self-preservation and um, de-escalation, and I needed to get up those steps. I couldn't say what would have happened walking through that crowd without it. But for the crime of wearing a Trump hat, Johnson found himself suspended. Ultimately, he resigned from the force and lost his pension. He now works part-time as a furniture mover. Yogananda Pittman, meanwhile, thrived. Two days after January 6th, Nancy Pelosi elevated Pittman to acting chief of the Capitol Police. Late last year, Pittman took a high-paying job as the head of security at UC Berkeley, which is right outside Pelosi's congressional district. Berkeley announced Pittman's hiring with unqualified praise for her, quote, steadfast commitment to social justice. Pittman herself boasted about her heroic performance on January 6th. Her department, she said, quote, saved democracy that day. All right, so this is really wild. So Tarek Johnson, Biden voter, 
puts the hat on because he did have some concerns about the people and he thought, all right, I'm gonna get in there as a police officer. Let me put the hat on, they'll think I'm a friendly and I can continue to do my work. And if people need to be rescued or moved or whatever it might be, I can go ahead and do it. This guy is the hero of the story. He ultimately got suspended for that. Then as Tucker said, he resigns now, he's moving furniture and nobody, nobody knows his name for the set of people that love to really drive someone's name into your brain relentlessly, often when they don't deserve it as heroes. Uh, that guy should be considered a hero. Okay, that, that's just fine. And then the follow-up on, on this woman who is now the head of security at Berkeley. By the way, last time I went to Berkeley, uh, massive protests, our car got broken into, somebody stole my laptop at my Nintendo Switch. I wasn't even really playing it much, but they told, took my, I, with Metroid, I had Metroid on that thing. Anyway, what's really interesting about this is not just that a guy like Stephen Colbert, who should be doing late night comedy, but is unable to do comedy, uh, that he's focusing on Tucker. It's watching now both set sides of the aisle go after Tucker. Now, again, I don't know if what Tucker is putting out there is 100% right. I don't know if they're offering a slant to it. I haven't seen all the things. But what I'm more interested in is the grand narrative of all of these things. And now watch this. Here is Chuck Schumer calling for Fox News and Rupert Murdoch not to let Tucker air the footage, which is rather wild considering uh, there's free speech in this country, I think, still like the guy could air it and then Chuck could get out there and be like, no, actually he edited it here and here, he lied about this, that, the other thing. But they don't wanna do that, that would involve work, that would involve, uh, say, a quest for truth. They prefer censorship, I mean, have you learned anything over the last couple of years? Here's Chuck. Now. I have to address this because it's been weighing on me, and it intensified after seeing Tucker Carlson last night. Last night, Fox News, with Speaker McCarthy as a willing, capable, and powerful accomplice, aired one of the most shameful hours we have ever seen in the history, in the entire history of cable television. Tucker Carlson ran a lengthy segment last night arguing the January 6th Capitol attack was not, not a violent insurrection. And yet these lies continue tonight. Rupert Murdoch, who has admitted they were lies and said he regretted it, has a special obligation to stop Tucker Carlson from going on tonight now that he's seen how he has perverted and slimed the truth and from letting him go on again and again and again. Not because their views deserve such opprobrium, but because our democracy depends on it. Man, Chuck Schumer is, is not a good person. He's not a good person. Um, the idea that he is now pressuring Rupert Murdoch, a private citizen, to censor another private citizen. This is kinda like the Twitter files, right? You send email to Twitter employees, hey, could you look into these accounts? We're not really saying anything. That's basically what Chuck is saying to Rupert right now. Rupert, you're not gonna let Tucker on air tonight, are you? And also that he dare utters the concept that he is the one defending the truth. Again, when you see all those people with the hats going in there and the flags and everything else, did they go in there and did they light fire to the building like has been happening in Portland and Seattle and what happened during the summer of love, right? Did they maul people and just destroy public and private property like we saw happening relentlessly uh, for a year in this country at the height of COVID when everybody was supposed to be locked in their house? Again, they didn't have any plans, blah, blah, blah. It's not to defend criminal activity, but people who were frustrated with a certain amount of nonsense and who may have been bamboozled. I'm, I'm not even saying they weren't. Maybe Trump did bamboozle some of these people, but were they criminal? Were they like gangster level criminals who were about to topple the United States government? Like, I, I just can't imagine the world that you live in if you think the answer to that is yes, but it's not just Chuck. It's odd that it's coming from both sides of the aisle. And that tells you that he's probably onto something because here's Mitch McConnell, noted swamp Republican, Mitch McConnell, and he's in complete agreement with Chuck. It was a mistake in my view for Fox News to depict this in a way that's completely at variance with what our chief law enforcement official here at the Capitol thinks. The thing is, Fox News is allowed to air whatever Fox News wants to air. 
So the chief officer of the Capitol might say, no, this is exactly what happened, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't mean it's true. That doesn't mean a news organization has to abide by that. Again, I don't know how many times I have to do this during the show. I am not telling you that everything he is airing is completely unmanipulated or true. I don't know. But I am for more information getting out there. Like if you don't think that that video of the officer, uh, of him being interviewed saying he was trying to get some help and couldn't get the help, if you don't think that that's interesting or worth knowing related to all of this, then whatever, then, then yeah, I mean, come on. Anywho, uh, it continues because now we've got Chuck Schumer in agreement with Mitch McConnell, which doesn't hap happen too often. And here is Corinne Jean-Pierre because she got asked about it. And her answer to this question, well, this is, this is Corinne. They, someone says I should call her Cringe Jean-Pierre instead of Corinne Jean-Pierre. Here's Cringe Jean-Pierre explaining uh, what you saw in that footage. Thanks, Ray. Uh, last night, Tucker Carlson cherry-picked video surveillance from the January 6th insurrection, severely downplaying the events of that day. Uh, he said the mob was orderly and meek and that they were tourists instead of insurrectionists. What's your response to Carlson and to Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who granted him access to that video? Um, anybody who watched that video would strongly degree, disagree. Anybody who watched that video uh, in a with their own eyes in a real way and saw what happened on that day would would disagree with what was just stated. Um, the president has been very clear. January 6 was the worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. And we should be focused on making sure that never happens again. Okay, it's rad rather extraordinary because they are literally like it's a meme, it's a joke, but they are telling you not to see what you see with your own eyes. My personal belief, I don't think this is a radical belief, is that a bunch of somewhat overzealous people got there, doors got opened for them, barriers moved. You know what happens when a whole group of people get together. But then once they were in the Capitol, for the most part, the Capitol building, for the most part, they were respectful and somebody did sit at Nancy Pelosi's chair and all of that stuff. But this idea that they were, you must understand, insurrectionists, like that this was a threat to the United States government is completely insane. It was over within hours. And then even if you think about it this way, if it had been a real insurrection, like this would have taken months and months of planning. There would have been people all over the country arrested for all sorts of things because of the massive planning, the network of people that would have had to have been involved and how they would have maintained power over the military and over the Congress and the branches of government and all of those things, but none of that happened. So she wants you to not see what you see with your own eyes, which, which is a bunch of people with red hats walking in and kind of just looking around. That's basically what happened. Happened. That basically is what happened. But she does not want you to see that. I think that's what our next video is. You shouldn't even be allowed to see it. The, the White the House feel frame. as though basically all of the footage should be released so people can see it within its full context. So the president believes we need to get to the bottom of what happened uh, on a very dark day in our democracy. The president has been very clear about that. We need to get to the bottom of what <laughs> occurred. The footage that we have seen, the footage that the American people have seen uh, is devastating. Uh, and what we saw was an attack on our constitution, was an attack on our democracy. Okay, again, we didn't see it, an attack on our constitution or on our democracy. I also wanna back up for a second because she said in the previous video, uh, that President Biden has called this the worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. Um, I was in New York for 9-11. I lived in New York. Uh, I lived on uh, 90th and 1st, about a block away from the, the mayor's residence over there. Uh, I was there for years after that, but for those weeks after, the absolute weeks and months, and, and really years, uh, the absolute devastation. My dad could not get home to my mom, had to stay in the city. My, my grandma who lived in the city, uh, my dad ended up going to her place. He couldn't get all the way up to my place, walked across town with a bunch of his employees who slept at my grandma's place. Uh, it was an absolute abject nightmare. Thousands of deaths, over 2,000 deaths. That was an actual attack on our democracy. Uh, this certainly was not that. But these people, they lie about everything. They, they inflate certain things that they want you to be really scared about. And they deflate or just outright hide or censor things that they don't want you to know about. Uh, and here's Corinne Jean-Pierre with an abject 100% lie. Go. 
them all yesterday, you guys reported on it, who have condemned uh, this false de depiction of the unprecedented violent attack on, con on our Constitution and the rule of law, which cost police, police uh, <laughs> officers their lives. And that's what we saw on that day, on a very dark day, an attack on our democracy. Caused police officers their lives. Uh, actually, one police officer did die days later of a heart attack, right? It was a heart attack, Brian Sidnick. Okay, but it did not cost police officers their lives. They did not take anyone hostage. They did not waterboard anybody or anything like that. Uh, so this is just what they do with everything. But now what I wanna link this to is how the lies get laundered through the machine. So you have late night hosts j just abject lying and just mocking uh, the guy for putting out what most people would just say should be, just be public information. If this was the insurrection of all time, how about we just see the video and everyone can decide what level of insanity this was and what should be done about it, right? Like, if you guys wanna make your case, why are you the ones that need to hide the information to make your case, right? So you got a guy like Colbert who does his version of the lie. You have Corinne Jean-Pierre who does her version of the lie. You have Chuck and you have McConnell who are agreeing nobody should see any of this and we should probably pressure the people to make sure that the guy who's releasing this doesn't even get on television tonight. I mean, that's absolutely extraordinary that Chuck said that. So it's the government and the media working together and they somehow are always working together against you, which is starting to become a problem if you ask me. Uh, here is Whoopi Goldberg, oh Lord. <laughs> there you go. Oh, we changed it, we changed it for you. We used to call this uh, pure bullshit. And I thought that was just like, it is true, that is factually sound, but I just thought it was a little bit much. Can we put that up again? I think this is a better way to describe the ladies of The View. This next clip shows, shows a certifiably crazy person. Uh, here is Whoopi Goldberg saying that the government should shut down Fox and that somehow the First Amendment doesn't protect speech, actually. Watch this. I have a question. Mm -hmm. How come this is not thought of as being recruiting? How come they're not thinking about like this as radicalizing? Why, isn't, why, is, why is this not being scrutinized the way that they scrutinize other yeah. uh, well, things? It, because to me, this, is, this should be against the law. You should not be able yeah. to, lay, to lie to the American knowingly. And, you know, it's one thing if you made a mistake and you didn't know, but we heard for five or six years how, you know, the media was yeah. lying, sack of do. They were fake news. Yeah. They were this. So how come? What is the, what is our, what do we do as Americans to to say this is not okay. I You'd think have to say it's the First Amendment. Yeah. I think you, well, I, no. Well, but the I First think, Amendment doesn't, doesn't allow you to willingly lie. That's Whoopee, you human whoopee cushion. Yes, the First Amendment does allow you to willingly lie. You have lied, and the ladies that you sit next to have lied about virtually everything for the past five years. Very fine people on both sides. The COVID vaccine works. No mandate is coming. Jesse Smollett was gonna be hanged. We could continue. You guys lie about everything. Just in the last couple of weeks, how many times have we pl played things where you lie? You lied about don't say gay. By the way, we checked yesterday on the show. It turns out no gay people have been arrested in Florida yet by saying gay, or even a straight person who might say gay. You guys lied about the AP uh, African American Studies thing. You are allowed to lie because of the First Amendment. I would prefer that people like you on shows like that, that for some reason brainwashed NPCs watch, I would prefer that you didn't lie, but you are allowed to lie, and I, and I don't wanna put you in jail for lying, okay? But again, what she's upset about here is that Tucker is releasing more information, not hiding information. You may not like the results of it, okay? You may not like the way he's doing it, but he's giving us more information, right? Not hiding information. That is a fundamental difference. But the fact, once again, that that woman gets up there on that live television show that is the number one rated show in daytime television, which is on at the exact same time we do this. So God bless you for watching this instead of watching that pure tripe, okay? Uh, but that she gets up there and then literally she's telling you you shouldn't be allowed to lie while she's lying about the First Amendment. Ah. Here's Adam Kinzinger. He's also a noted liar and he's calling Tucker a liar. So liar, liar, pants on fire. Here we go. 
but he doesn't care because he wants people's money. He is an unserious man who is doing serious damage with the cooperation of Kevin McCarthy, who wants to have Tucker Carlson on his speed dial because he likes to impress people in the room with who's on his speed dial. This is dangerous. And, uh, you know, Michael Fanone will tell you about how all dangerous that was because it was it was a really bad day that is being whitewashed. But the kids of the people that believe that somehow that wasn't an insurrection, they're going to they're going to know better. And the parents will never admit they ever believed it in the first place. It's just words. They just put words together to scare people. And Tapper sits there with his fake newsman glasses and pretends that it's all real. Again, where are the plans? Was anyone taken over the nuclear codes? Were military members running into the Senate under the auspices of Trumpdom and MAGA wishes and gonna take, it's all silly drivel. Uh, here is uh, Jake Tapper and Jake, uh, Jake, the thing with Jake is he was the one semi-sane guy there, but I get it. If you're, if you're in a mental, let's say you're a semi-sane guy and they throw you unjustly into a mental institution, which is what MSNBC and CNN in this case are, eventually you're going to go crazy too, because it's, it's hard to be the one sane guy at the mental institution. You know, I actually had a cousin who once Something happened, she got unjustly thrown in a, into a mental institution for a weekend, and she came out crazier than she went in. It's, it's a freaking long ass story, I'll tell you guys some other time. But that's what, in essence, happened to Jake Tapper. Uh, here he is gaslighting his own audience into pretending that Fox believes that January 6th didn't happen at all. You know, I know it probably is pretty upsetting personally to have been there, and in your case, uh, Officer Fanon, to have been physically harmed severely and see this entire presentation pretending that this didn't happen uh, and I want you to know we see you we know what happened uh, and I don't know what to say about this except I'm sorry we see you like he's an avatar remember the avatar we see I see you I see you something look nobody on Fox I've watched enough of the clips nobody's saying it didn't happen the question is what actually happened how did it happen and to what degree was it actual criminal behavior and intentional versus just saying it was an insurrection and it was the worst thing ever and people should be thrown in jail and have trials delayed and they should be in isolated, uh, you know, containment and all of that stuff. Anyway, it just continues on CNN. Here is Anderson Cooper. You know, it's funny, we don't show a lot of Anderson Cooper. What happened to him? He was like, everyone thought he was going to be like some big shot one day. You know, he's, uh, he came from a lot of money, got on television. People seem to like his salt and pepper hair, but he kind of became nothing. Anyway, here he is uh, interviewing that same Capitol Police officer and they're going off on Tucker. The idea of Tucker Carlson being in that mob that day and not wetting his pants is hard to imagine. I mean, th th I, I find it hard to understand somebody who has never put himself in harm's way in, in any capacity for anyone else uh, or on reporting a story um, and yet has the audacity to try to rewrite history. Tucker Carlson is, you know, by his own admission, an entertainer, not a journalist. Um, and on, on top of that, he's just proven himself to be uh, Donald Trump's chief propagandist. And that's all this was. And I think that, uh, you know, most Americans recognize that uh, way before this uh, segment aired, that this was propaganda. Uh, and it was an attempt uh, by Tucker Carlson to uh, to downplay and, and whitewash the events of January 6th. Notice they never talk about the specific events of January 6th, right? It's always they're whitewashing the events, but what are the events? I mean, is it, don't you find it interesting that we now know that a Capitol Police officer was calling for backup to get senators out of the building and he was being ignored and then had to do it on his own and that guy doesn't even work at the Capitol anymore. Does that seem interesting to you? Like that actually is interesting to me. That's a new piece of information about this. And, and just Anderson, the way he talks about it, as if Anderson's always putting himself in, in harm's way, right? I mean, he was born with a, a silver spoon in his mouth. He's Gloria Vanderbilt's daughter, Google it. Like it, the guy, he's doing okay. Don't worry about Anderson Cooper. Uh, but let's continue because the machine itself, what we know about the machine, is that the machine will always protect the machine. And that seems to be what's happening here. Again, I'm not, I'm actually not even that interested in the January 6th story. It's why I've barely covered it. I didn't think it was much of anything. I knew what they were gonna do with it. And that's why I've tried to ignore it. And, and hopefully I won't have to spend much time after this. And by the way, you know, one of the bigger issues, this is sort of like the Twitter file situation 
which is the Twitter files come out. We literally, like it's without question, please fact check me, NewsGuard, without question find out that the government was working with Twitter to silence private citizens. 100% we know it. And we also know that the government paid Twitter to do some of that work. That has been exposed for sure. The question is, did that wake anybody up? Now, I know you're watching this right now and you got it. You were like, wow, that does confirm an awful lot of the stuff that I've been thinking. And I should probably tell uh, my wife or husband about that. But the, all of the people on the other side, it doesn't move anybody. And I think that that's sort of what's gonna happen here with this thing. Those of us who sort of felt, felt that January 6th was kind of nonsense and that the government was cracking down on people for their own nefarious reasons and everything else, we'll be sort of boldened into that, right? Like we'll, we'll be hardened into that idea. And the people who just think Tucker's evil and Fox is evil, and blah, 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 they're, they're gonna go the other way. So I don't think that if you look at sort of like every reaction has a, every action has a reaction, I think we just kind of just stay still after this whole thing. Uh, but the machine is extremely good at protecting itself, which is why Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell are suddenly on the same side, right? Like that is freaking bizarro unless you understand that they're praying to the altar of the machine. Uh, now here, speaking of the machine, Fauci, he's back, baby. Uh, you know, he retired, got, got his 400 plus K a year uh, pension, highest paid person in the federal government. He should be shamed. This man should not be allowed to go to a restaurant without... Uh, being yelled at, right? Like, I'm not for that sort of thing. This, that's more of a Democrat. That's more of a Maxine Waters situation. But Fauci should be ashamed wherever he goes that he knows he had a tremendous amount to do with all of the kids with learning disabilities now who were kicked out of schools, all of the people who injected themselves with God knows what and now have all sorts of vaccine injuries. By Be Justin Bieber's eye isn't working, like a whole bunch of weird stuff. Anyway, Fauci's still on television. He went on Anderson Cooper. I can't believe it. We're playing two Anderson Cooper clips back to back. Uh, and he's never been prouder of what he's done. The guy is just the best and he still wants everyone to know it. Obviously become very partisan. As you mentioned, House Republicans are holding a COVID hearing tomorrow. Tomorrow, you're obviously someone they are, have been focused on. Would you testify if they asked you? Of course. Oh, without a doubt. If they asked me, I definitely will testify. Senator Paul just today on Fox News accused you of orchestrating a cover-up. Do you have any reason to think the new Congress is going to be any less contentious? Or do you think they're actually interested in seeking the truth? Well, I don't know, uh, uh, Anderson. I, I don't really want to comment on that. I mean, I, I, the most important thing we've got to do is stick with data, stick with science, be transparent and be honest, which I have been very much so literally for the entire 50 years that I've been at the NIH. Yeah, liar, liar, pants on fire. Stick with data, stick with science. Really? Because this was a virus, even at the peak of the thing, that over 99% of people survived. Okay, that was one thing. You were lying publicly saying that masks work while you were emailing friends who wanted to go on vacation saying masks don't work. You claim that you never wanted schools to close, but we have plenty of videos of you saying that they, uh, that they should close. Uh, you lied about the vaccines and the efficacy of the vaccines. Like, th but the gall of these people, but you have to understand they're emboldened to keep going because it, the machine protects the machine. It's, it's wild, it's, it's a mafia racket. But not everyone is falling for it. There are little pockets of places, little, say, states where freedom matters. Can you see where I'm going with this already? And things are being done properly in a certain amount of places. And yes, it starts in Florida. So the other crazy thing that is happening right now is that tennis legend, like arguably the best tennis player ever, certainly the best on earth right now, Novak Djokovic, he is unvaxxed. He was unable to play in a couple major tennis tournaments over the past couple of years. His argument was, hey, I'm young and healthy. Tennis, it's just one guy and another guy on the other side and a one ball, we're not breathing all over each other. I'm taking care of myself. I get plenty of sun, I eat right. I'm like the peak of physical health. Like, why should I take this vax? They are still not letting him in the United States right now. Think about how Freaking insane that is. I guess it shouldn't be thought of as freaking insane considering only two days ago, the harpies at The View let their own audience take their masks off. I mean, for me, it's just like hard to believe that people still live in that reality, but okay. So that's happening right now. No, uh, Novak Djokovic cannot get in the United States. So uh, Governor DeSantis over here in the free state of Florida, he's trying to come up with a creative way to make it happen. I think as you guys know, you know, num number one tennis player, uh, one of the best ever. He is being discriminated against because he didn't take the MNRA COVID jab. And he never wanted to do it from the beginning.
And you know what? There are people in Florida who never wanted to do it, and we fought for your right to make that choice without losing your job or having the stuff. And so not only has he not wanted to take it, we now have the data to show these booster shots aren't preventing you from getting infected. People get infected anyways. And so, you know, it's like, okay, now you have this, this, this rule, and we're one of the only countries in the world that has this rule that you have to show shot records to come in as a foreign visitor on an airplane. Djokovic has already had COVID. You know, there's something called natural immunity, which the CDC didn't want to recognize, but we all know is a fact of life. And so he poses zero risk to the United States, zero risk to the state of Florida, and zero risk to Miami. So he should be allowed to compete. Now, I would run a, I would run a boat from the Bahamas here for him. I would do that 100%. But... We are going to have to smuggle in tennis players on boats from the Bahamas. That's where we're at in this clown car of endless stupidity. But really, guys, joking aside, the federal government still does not want unvaccinated people in this country. Think how absolutely insane that is. And then put that in contrast to the beginnings of COVID when we knew it was coming from Wuhan, right? Whether you thought it was coming from the lab or from the wet market or whatever. And Trump said, hey, we're gonna close the doors to China. And everyone called him racist, right? Now, when COVID is basically over, we know that vaccines don't work, natural immunity does, all of the stuff we've, you know, all of the sane people have moved past it. And we are still trying to keep this guy out of the United States. Do you think it has anything to do with COVID anymore or could it have something to do with control? What, what do you really think? And if you think it's a joke, if you think it's completely made up that we're not allowing Djokovic in, uh, well, here's cringe Jean-Pierre. Governor Ron DeSantis uh, has now called on President Biden to allow uh, the tennis player Novak Djokovic to compete in the Miami Open despite him being unvaccinated for COVID-19. Uh, do you guys have a response to that? So on a question of regarding the vaccination requirement, I refer you to the CDC. They're the ones who, uh, who deal with that. It's still in place. Uh, and we expect everyone to abide by our country's rule, whether as a participant or a spectator. And uh, for, as for what goes on specifically with the BNP uh, open, those are, those are questions for them. It is a private entity, and so we will uh, let them speak to that. But again, this is something that the CDC uh, speaks to. You know, the CDC does not rule over you. Do you guys know that? You know, these people are always concerned about an insurrection. They care so much about our institutions and the Constitution and the government and all of that stuff. The CDC, the Center for Disease Control, uh, is just a government institution, right? It is not an institution that governs you, right? We have to abide by the Bill of Rights and the laws of the federal government and the, the state governments. Um, but I, I, don't, I really don't even know what to say about these people anymore because this has nothing to do with the truth. So on one hand, they lie about absolutely everything and then they tell you that they're the truth tellers. It's so absolutely extraordinary. So the question really is, I suppose this is the question of the day over here at the Rubin Report. Who is actually trying to fool you, right? Do you think I have sat here for the last 40 minutes and tried to fool you of anything, right? Like here's some information, I'm, I'm being quite upfront. Uh, well, first off, I'm also not a journalist. I am some guy trying to translate some of the insanity. I hand it to you and then you have a brain and then you can think about it, right? And maybe you'll come to a different conclusion that I have. But removing me from the equation, who is lying to you right now? And who is, who's, let's put it this way, who's trying to get you more to a narrative and who's trying to get you more to the truth, would you say? Would you say it's Tucker or the machine? I wanna go back, and we're just gonna play 10 seconds of it, of the first clip that we started with today. And I really want you to think about this for just a second. Here's Colbert. Thanks in large part to the former president. There's a whole industry of people who make a good living trying to make you think you're insane. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of people trying to make you feel insane. That's what Colbert is telling you. Now let's flash back to this clip of Colbert with Fauci on the street uh, going after anti-vaxxers and promoting the vax. And you tell me, who, who's been trying to make you feel insane? Take a look. Are you worried at all about the new booster? No. No? No. Are you, are you, are, are you worried? You're not worried that the, the 5G chip that it puts in you is going to interfere with the 3G well, chip from the last know. one? Bill Gates and I decided we're going to take the chips out now. We're not going to. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, I know you want to convince people to go get this shot. 
right? Right. It's, 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 a, it's a cool thing to do. Right. Okay. What could be more compelling than getting the shot with a pair of sexy kitten ears on? <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you go. Hello. Good afternoon. I was wondering whether I could set my friend up here with a COVID booster shot. Absolutely. Have a seat. Great. There Thank you go. Thank you. Just need to ask you a few questions. Sure. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a COVID vaccination before? Yes, I have. Okay. Mm -hmm. And did you have any untoward reactions to that vaccination? Mm -hmm. Good. And have you been infected before? I have. How long ago was that? Uh, a little bit over three months. Okay. Uh, three months. Everything checks out. Let's get you vaccinated. All right, let's do it. Are you nervous to give Anthony Fauci a shot? I've done this plenty of times. But it's Anthony Fauci. Are you nervous? That's like pouring a drink for Jack Daniels. Right. <laughs> are, you, are you nervous to give this man a shot? He's actually only the third most fam famous person I've vaccinated. Who's the most famous person you've vaccinated? Take a deep breath in for me. Who is and the most out. famous person? <laughs> That's it. There's the moment. There you go. Okay, who's the most famous person you've vaccinated? I can't tell you that. Yes, you can. Head to vaccines.gov to find booster shots near you. Dr. Anthony Fauci, everybody. So you tell me, guys, after watching that, now knowing that the vaccines don't work, the boosters don't work, do you know how many people I know, and I'm sure you know too, that are so freaking thrilled that they never succumb to the pressure, right? Like, I never succumbed to the pressure. David never succumbed to the pressure. We got pretty damn close, and we were under all sorts of pressures like everybody else. Family, friends, blah, blah, blah. And I, the more they push, the less I wanted to do it. And I am freaking thrilled. And I know that the three people I'm sitting in this room with are thrilled that they didn't do it either. I know so many people who got a shot, got a follow-up, got a booster, who are, are now looking into all the ways that you can detox your body. They're concerned, as I've told you guys many times, I have a friend who's in his early 20s who's having heart issues for the first time. I have another friend who's having uh, double vision that she never had before this. She's having some, like, the, this stuff is real. So who is lying to you? Who is gaslighting you? Is it Tucker Carlson on what he's doing on January 6th? Or is it Stephen Colbert and Anthony Fauci who were lying about everything? Also, uh, at the beginning of that, where he says to, to Fauci, you're not worried about the booster. And Fauci, no, he's not. Really, you're not? Still, if we could ask you that question now, are you still not worried about it? And then they make these silly jokes about 5G and Bill Gates. It's like every time someone has an inkling of truth, they want to step on it and quash it. And it's just absolutely insane. And then that, that he dare says that getting the vaccine is the cool thing to do. But if you don't think that Stephen Colbert has debased himself, embarrassed himself, like I hope it's worth the cash, man. You, you got a lot of money. I get it. You got a lot of money. Money's good. People like having stuff. It's cool. You have absolutely debased yourself. But if you don't think that what we just showed you is debasing enough, do you remember this one? How about watch this one and tell me who's a propagandist and a liar after you see that? I mean, this one is just, this should go down and they should study this on other planets. So you have a millionaire clown, and that's all that he is. No offense, Bozo. There are some respectable clowns out there. But you have a millionaire clown doing the dirty work for the NIH, doing the dirty work for pharmaceutical companies, dancing around like a buffoon, telling you to inject something in your body, and then telling you that the people who are a bit skeptical of it, whether it's Tucker Carlson, whether it's me, whether it's you, we're the bad guy. We're the bad guys. So what do we do about all this, guys? How do we tie a show like this together so that you, you feel good? Because this is, this is a lot of nonsense, right? Like it's a lot of nonsense and it's not, it's not, it doesn't feel good to have to deal with this nonsense. But there are ways to feel good and there are, uh, well, there are plenty of ways to feel good. Uh, whatever your uh, choice might be, be it the tequila or the weed or uh, sitting quietly in nature, whatever, whatever you like. But there are people out there who are breaking through the thing. Right, and that's what's happening also, and that's also why they want to censor everybody and everything else. One of the main guys right now who is breaking through the thing, and we've seen it, we've seen it, right? When Russ, when uh, let's say Joe Rogan at first was really breaking through the machine, and then the machine started calling him racist, and you see these little blips of people getting through. I think the main guy getting through right now is Russell Brand. As I said, I have some political disagreements with Russell Brand. We discussed a few of them yesterday, and we'll put the video up. Uh, next week, but he is a good, decent man and he's trying to bring something true to the people. 
He's trying to do something true for himself first, I think, and then translate that across to other people. Uh, here he is, it's just a little bit, him on Rogan a couple days ago, talking about God and belief and how that is a key piece of how you can cope with the world, especially a world that is filled with just so much unrelenting BS. Russell Brand has been an actor, a comedian, a podcast host for decades. All of a sudden, he's one of the most forceful voices for the truth in the English speaking world. He's also a deeply interesting person with a lot of insights about God. Amazing, Russell Brand. We sat down with him for a long conversation, a brand new episode of Tucker Carlson today. Here's a small part of it. As much as I might enjoy the feeling of privilege and luxury, and I'm certainly making no claims to be an ascetic, I remember what reality is. I remember that my wellness is contingent upon spiritual connection, upon certain values and principles, and they, I am sorry to admit, involve sacrifice and self-scrutiny about my own conduct yes. and behavior, yes. which is often we often fall short and I'm working on improving myself. I continue to work on improving myself. So when I sort of hear morality sort of as bombast or when I hear rhetoric divorced from compassion, it makes me feel uneasy. So I've been blessed with a very practical spirituality like many desperate people. I need spirituality. I need God or I cannot cope in this world. I need to believe in the best in people. I need to believe that there are new alliances possible, new ways of us communicating because I see actual and corrupt systems delivering yet more misery to people and I think it's increasingly necessary that we find new ways of framing the conversation and looking into our hearts when we're speaking. All right so that was obviously Russell talking to Tucker I think I said he was talking to, to Joe there uh, but he did have an excellent interview with Joe last week which was on my mind that's why I said it but uh, the point there is there are some people who are trying to do something honest I think he's on that list. I think there are way more people than we think. Like they're not all public people, right? Like private people that are trying to find something that is true uh, to incorporate a, a, a decent, honest life in a way that is cogent in a time of complete, utter chaos. You know, it's interesting that he said the thing about God that, he, you know, in essence, he needs God. It reminds me of a line. I can't believe I'm going to quote this guy, but I had John Kasich on. John Kasich was a former uh, governor of Ohio. He ran for president. Uh, against Trump, you know, first time around. And uh, we had him at the house and I was interviewing him and we talked a bit about spirituality, which was not my intention when I sat down with him. And he said something that I thought was really interesting. It's a line that I've used a couple of times. He said, you know, a lot of people could do it without God. I'm not one of those people. And that's kind of what Russell Brand just said right there. Uh, so the, to end all of this, whether you believe in God or something, don't just believe in the government and don't just believe the machine. If the machine wants you to believe anything, it can make you believe anything. And that is why so many people have gone crazy over the last couple of years. So find the people that are doing something to find that, that true north, that star, that truth, something or other. And I think that is how we will get out of this. That's a bit of what I discussed with Russell. And again, that'll be up next week. Uh, we got a post-game show for you in just moments for subscribers at rubenreport.locals.com. And by the way, uh, Russell announced yesterday that he is releasing his new stand-up special in a couple weeks exclusively on Locals. I mean, really for me, like think how cool that is. Like I had this little idea a couple years ago of creating this tech company, really just so that I could fund this show. That was it. We weren't going to spin it off into anything else. It was like, how do we build a subscription model so I can keep doing what I want and, and build my company and that sort of thing. And then we obviously decided to, you know, become the, the startup and, and raise the funds and everything else. And then now with everything going on with Rumble and with Russell breaking through and that the guy's releasing his stand-up show on, on the platform that I was, you know, just had this dream of creating, like it's really freaking cool. And it just shows you if you try guys, something good might happen. Uh, the special is called Brandemic and it's going to be out on March 13th. That's just in a couple of days. Uh, part two of my interview with Carol Markowitz and Bethany Mandel, both great actual journalists who are also mama bears who were sick of their kids getting abused by the system. They have a new book out. Uh, we did that live in Miami last week. That's up right now. Full things on locals. We leave you with Joe Biden and we'll get to comments, questions, corrections, and whatever else you got for me on locals in just a sec. All right. See you tomorrow.